What happens when two seasoned business leaders get together? They talk shop, of course. Sit back and listen in as Scott DeLong and Vince Moiso share from their experience around current issues facing executives, entrepreneurs, and their leadership teams. The CEO Podcast starts now. Hey everybody, it's Scott DeLong with the CEO Podcast. I'm here always with Vince Moiso, and today we have a special guest, a good friend of mine. I mean, we don't see each other nearly enough, but every time we do, it's fun. It is. It's it is. Scott Duffy. Um, Scott is a serial entrepreneur yes. and the kind of person that you're going to want to know after you spend time here. Awesome. He's written a couple books, two now, right? Two bestsellers? Uh, three, or three, three, two bestsellers. Um, last one published by Entrepreneur Magazine. Good for you. Yeah. Congratulations. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Um, I met Scott, I don't know, maybe seven years ago uh, through a friend of ours, Bob Danell, which we've talked about That's a little bit right. on this. Right. And then through Entrepreneur Organization, where I had to yep. recruit him in to the group so that I could make a mark. Like He pulled me. He yeah. pulled me in is what he did. <laughs> I, yeah. I was dragging. I was dragging him <laughs> in. And, um, so we've got, we've used Scott a few times for other things as well. He is a really excellent MC. Oh, so I've held a couple of events and, and I said, hey, can you do the introductions here? Mm -hmm. Because he does such a better job at that than anyone else I know. So oh, thank you. Uh, actually, a good friend of ours, Troy Hoffman, does a good job too with that. Troy does a great job. Yeah. 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 Troy, you know, he just... Yeah, he, he tra trades awesome. Yeah. yeah. And it's not easy. It's not easy to do that. Right? So you either have that talent or you don't. I don't happen to have that talent. So yeah. that's why I hire out. Yeah. I, I think, you know, the key, the key to being a good MC was number one, uh, preparation is a part of it, but mm -hmm. it's all about being more interested than interesting. Good. And I think what happens is yeah. a lot of MCs try to make themselves a star of whatever it is that they're doing. But you're not the star when you're an MC. That's you're so important. That's so important. You're not. And I, and I think that, um, you know, I think we're going to talk about some of this today, but like if you're out there and you're making content and let's say yeah. you're doing a podcast, yeah. you have to decide, are you going to be the star or is the person that I'm interviewing going to be the star? Yeah. Because it's a completely different energy. Yeah, it is. It's a different way of preparing. And I, saw I think it's the same, same way about being a CEO. Yeah. Do you want to be the star or do you want your people to be the star? Yeah. And it used, yeah. that has switched, right? So the, the, the star employees, as opposed to the star CEO, mm -hmm. those companies do better. Yeah. I, I think, you know, I mean, the way I look at it today is that, um, you know, the real job of leadership in any company is to understand what it is that drives the people who work for them. Yeah. So that, you know, you can not only help to make them the star, but you can create a workplace and an environment mm -hmm. that enables them to get what they want the way that they want it, um, you know, in a way that I guess is just really relevant to their life. It's like if you go to, a, you know, you go to a, a Gen Z kid and you're selling that kid on salary and like benefits, including like disability and stuff like that. They're like, what the what's disability? Right. <laughs> like, what what do I want? That, yeah. that won't happen to me. Right? Yeah. But what is it that really makes that really makes them tick? Yeah. And I think that we hear a lot of people, a lot of leaders complain about uh, millennials or Gen Z if they're older leaders. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think that the real problem is that they're not connecting with the people who work for them that's right to find out what drives them i think if they find out what drives them the results that they're going to be able to get you know some, they're they're amazing so i think this applies to a lot of different things sure. it's funny yeah. that you're saying that because i'm going to tell you what i heard okay right yeah. and, it, and, and i'm going to simplify it it's yeah. called know your audience know your audience and yeah. i think yeah. whether we're talking about you know emceeing an event or yeah. run, running a business or or frankly just presenting so the topic that we're going to get talking into to your spouse right right, right. Know you know, your we're, audience. we're talking about getting into this discussion yeah. around running a mastermind and how to yeah. develop that and all of that but I, I i think you know it's just understanding that target audience know who that audience is and then it's really easy to present at that point. It's, I think it's a lot easier to start to build content when, when you have the path and you know who you're going to be speaking to. And it's so funny. So I went, you know, again, I went to, I, I'm laughing because as you're saying all of that, I, I'm thinking about know your audience. And I was at an event earlier today and, and I was just thinking, wow, you know, they have just missed about the event planners for this event yeah. and, and the, all the way to the MC just has completely missed the boat yeah. as to, as to, you know, just understanding the audience and what they would want out of an event like this. Well, I, I and saw, it's easy to do. And I see how yeah. people, people have those big misses. Sure. Well, I, I, so I think that the two most important questions that entrepreneurs can ask, that, that leaders can ask, and it's funny because 
we were talking about the training industry earlier. Yep. Yep. And, you know, I, I got my start. I, I went to school down in San Diego. Mm -hmm. I went to college. I got this really Where'd you go to school? I went to USD. So did I. You went to USD? Yeah. No that's way. one of the, like, the event that I was at today. So I'm the president of the alumni association. Get yeah. out of here. Yeah, that's classic. My Are you kid, serious? Yeah, my daughter's a junior there this year, and uh, she's studying out in Madrid, Spain. Yeah. No way. What, what, what year were you there? I graduated. So I didn't graduate. I was there from... 88 to 91. Uh, so we just missed each other. So I came in in 92. Yeah. That is so funny. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Okay. So that's, that is that's funny. awesome. Small so, world. Yeah. Okay. So in, in 90, I think, so I guess it would have been 1990. Like we had this tradition back then. Maybe you guys did it too. Where after midterm exams, people get in the car and they go down to San Felipe. Oh yeah. Right. Oh yeah. I was there. Yeah. Okay. I, mean, we, we did, they, they, I don't know if they still do it today. I don't think so. I haven't heard that, but yeah, we were doing it. Yeah. I went, I went two years in a row. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so you're gonna totally get this. So in in my junior year, I finished my exams early. I went down early to set up. Yeah. And it's like a, so for people who don't know this, it's like a nine hour drive. It is, it's gnarly. Right. Yeah. And, and back then you you go you take these Mexican highways, these federal highways, yeah. and they were like there was like one lane in each <laughs> yeah, direction. Was I'm not, gonna guess there's a VW yeah, bug it, involved it, in this. Somewhere. Yeah, somewhere. Yeah, yeah. So it wasn't easy, was easy to get to. It was not easy to <laughs> yeah. get to. Yeah. So, so so what happened was we were we were about 90 miles south of the border, yeah, going about 90 miles an hour. And if you can remember, there's there's these parts where the, the desert, the road kind of rises. Oh, yeah. Well, a, a truck had gone off the side of the road. Oh, she And tried to gun it back up. And we didn't see him. He didn't see us. We hit this guy going you know, square on, going 90 miles Oh, my God. Out. And I'm telling you, it was the worst day of my life. And the question I, was, I always ask people is, is, you know, how many times in your life have you been going down a road and maybe you're doing everything in right? The near misses. Right. Yeah. And maybe in business, you had the perfect idea, the perfect plan, the perfect team. You executed flawlessly. Yeah. yeah. And then something came and it knocked you off course. Maybe yeah. it was COVID, an illness, the change in the economy. And everything you did at that point, every email you wrote, text you wrote, call you made, you had to throw out and start over. And honestly, like that's what happened to me. Wow. While I was recovering, my roommate's dad gave me a motivational book on tape. And he goes, you should listen to this thing. Before he knew it, I had a library. So when I got better, I decided I wanted to go graduate from USD and work as an intern for anybody I listened to. Wow. The first guy I applied to intern for was Tony Robbins. Wow. Yeah, that's a great story. And he gave me a job. That's a great story. And so I end up, you know, by the time I was probably 21, 22, I'd done like 300 seminars and workshops for yeah. him. Again, here's my point. My point is this. The one thing that I remember that he taught me back then, I mean, the most important lesson for an entrepreneur is these two questions that we got to ask. And the first is this, mm -hmm. what's most important to you yeah. about blank, right? And the second, and this is what nobody asks, is what has to happen or how do you know you're getting what you want? Now, let me give you the example real quick. COVID hits. I'm a gym rat. Can't go to the gym anymore. A friend comes over yeah. and they said, I want to create like a tech thing so you can work out. And he said to me, what's most important to you about like a tech thing you use at home? Yep. And I said, it's easy to use. Okay. Now here's the problem. Easy to use means a million different things to a million different people. Of course. Totally subjective. So, and so, different age groups. And yeah. different age groups. <laughs> <laughs> different age groups. <laughs> so he goes back and he builds what he thinks is easy to use. He gives it to me and I'm like, I never use it. And he, I said, here's the second question you have to ask. Well, what has to happen? How do you know it's easy to use? And I said, well, I, I use an iPhone. I want to pay one time because I don't know if I want this. And I go through this list. Now you got to buy our blueprint. And so, you know, for entrepreneurs, especially today as the economy is changing, I think the most important thing you can do is reach out to all your customers and ask them today, what is most important to you? And then what has to happen? How do you know that you're getting what you want so you can change and adjust mm. and adapt? Mm. You see? That's great. Yeah, that's huge. The, 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 the adapting, the, the, the pivoting. By the way, you made me think of Peloton. Like immediately mm. I'm thinking of, yeah. of, you know, probably the yeah. prime example of just, you know, missing that that was a temporary thing and that people were going to want to go back to the gym, yeah. you know, and, and a piece of technology uh, and, and pivoting.
so <laughs> that's huge. Small world, USD. I love that. Wow. San Felipe. Wow. Unbelievable story, though, that wow. like that would happen to you. And that's a life changing event. And you can see it, right? Yeah. Having t- t- taken that road and stuff. Well, no, when you said that, I thought of how many times, one, have I been down that road? How yeah. many times, you know, like, I, I, whether it's that road or some other road in Mexico and yeah. Baja that I was yeah. traveling to, or yeah. some other place, a party I was going to and going ni- 90 miles an hour and all the near misses. Right. Yeah. Uh, and, and that one hit you and, and changed your life and arguably like, man, then you land Tony Robbins, which, you know, arguably could you hit, you know, a, yeah. a, a bigger spot at a bigger time yeah. to, to, to learn from. So to your like point, that. those, those near misses happen every single day. And whether do we recognize them or not? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Recognize yeah. When they hit you in the face, right? You know it. Yeah. Well, Mike. Yeah. Mike but Tyson near, says everyone has a plan, so you yeah. can punch in the face. But are, are we recognizing the near misses and making the adjustments there? Yeah. I tell a story about um, if you want to do take a sailboat from here to Hawaii, yeah. right? And, and you and you point to the horizon. You don't yeah. look at the bow of the ship. Yeah. Because you you got it all set. You're going to go in that direction, but the wind's going to blow. Yeah. And it's going to blow. Yeah. Right. And if it just takes you off one degree, you're yeah. not in Hawaii anymore. Yeah. Right. One degree from Newport, you're going to be somewhere up there, North over Asia, there. Or somewhere. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So so taking a look and looking for those signs. What are what are the signs? They're looking yeah. further out. Look at look out in the horizon as well. I know you're a real fail fast kind of guy. Yeah. Right? So ship fast, fail fast, learn. Yeah. And, and, and iterate. Um, but however, before you do that, you know where you think you want to go originally. Right. You, you do. And you keep your eyes up and you keep focused on right. like, if I can come back to that point about kind of like noticing those those hits. Mm-hmm. Right. Or those things. So, so I guess there's two things I, I, I'd like to say to that. that you know, the, the first is entrepreneurs are incredible at fooling themselves. <laughs> it's like the hits are coming the hits yeah. are coming and, and and you know that they're or we coming. get distracted he's a squirrel there right okay. yeah so i think i think two things happen one is we get distracted distracted easily sure. right that's a common problem i think the other problem is you know we're out there and we're telling a story and, and, and sure. our job is to put on a brave face mm-hmm. right so we can't necessarily tell our family everything or we don't necessarily tell all of our employees, our investors, like we're working through this stuff. I think the other thing um, you start, happens, start though, believing your story even more than it. Than well, so I was, yeah, yeah, I was just, yeah. I thought that as like you tell the story enough yeah. times yeah. and it just becomes the truth after a while. Right. And now you're convincing yourself because you've repeated it so many times. It's so funny that you say that, Scott, because I adopted the value, you know, that this was, this is going back a decade, but I adopted the value of transparency. I call it get real. So that, yeah. that's just a value that I'm going to hold in any business I'm running. Coaching, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It's literally, okay, no, no, I'm not going to tell a story other than the one that's happening. <laughs> and that's it. Because yeah. otherwise, exactly like you're saying, yeah. like every entrepreneur, we get stuck in our own realities. And and then, you know, the near misses just keep happening yeah. until finally it hits you in the face. So, so here's a pitch for yeah. coach, coaching again then, right? You come back to, as an entrepreneur, we got our blinders on. We have our point in the horizon that we want to get to, but we have blinders on. And yeah. we don't see yeah. what that, what's out here. Where if you get yourself a really good coach, they will point that out to you. Well, they will. And, and, and I would say that if you're going to get a coach, like, a huge mistake that people make, and I think a really important distinction is you can get it. You can get um, you can go and you can talk to people. They're going to tell you one, one of two things. They're going to give you opinion or they're going to give you counsel. Mm-hmm. This is really important because opinion comes from people that may love you. They care for you. They want the best for you. But here's the thing. They have never walked in the exact same shoes you're in or where you want to go. Of course not. Yeah. Everything they share. This is 99% of the people that you know. Yeah. Everything they share is an educated guess. Yes. Counsel comes from people that have actually walked in the shoes that you want to walk. That's exactly right. Great point. Right? Or, or similar shoes. It, it, it can be exactly close, enough, close enough. Close right? enough, right? Sure. Close enough. So it might not be in the same industry, but it might be a similar experience. So this kind of like we, the way we, we experience sharing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We know you're a serial entrepreneur. I don't know many entrepreneurs that aren't serial entrepreneurs, right? <laughs> um, so we know that part, but you're an author, you know, you've yeah. created a mastermind. You've done a lot of other things, yeah. right? That I think are really interesting. So, you know, can you, can you go just a little <laughs> bit deeper into your background, um, your books, yeah. award-winning books and, uh, and, and then we can jump 
into that mastermind conversation as well. Sure. I'll, I'll just keep it really, really brief. So um, I started working for Tony Robbins in the training industry uh, when I was 20, 21 years old. Also worked for Jim Rohn, mm -hmm. who was a real iconic figure in the space mm -hmm. at the time. Yep. Um, I got the, I, I, I kind of got bit by the internet um, shortly after that and I moved up to the Bay Area um, in my mid twenties. And I, I actually wrote a business plan for Yahoo when they had 10 people in their first office, wow. nine engineers and one business person. And it was theoretical on how you would make money on a website, hmm. right? And I ended up um, being on the ground floor, um, early stage of a series of companies that through IPOs and partnerships and acquisitions became big brands. So startup to cbssports.com, zoom.com, we built to the eighth largest site in, in the world on the internet, mm -hmm. XOOM, sold it to NBC for 4.4 billion, created NBC internet, I was on that launch team. Um, I launched foxsports.com with Ross Levinson here wow. in LA. Wow. Started a company that was like Expedia for private jets as mm -hmm. an entrepreneur, sold it to Virgin, and ran it for Richard Branson in that group for, for a couple of years. Um, and then, you know, for me, I mean, like we're all entrepreneurs, right? So to me, like if I could like work with Elon Musk today, be amazing. Back then, if I could work with Richard Branson, yeah, it was I get it. I, I I still think that way. So <laughs> yeah. wait, 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 so 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 I take that job today. So here's the thing: it's so relevant to what we were talking about. Is that I mean, at that time in my life, I, I thought I hit the jackpot. I made tons of money. I sold a company yeah. to Virgin. I'm all over television with Richard Branson. Yeah, and the market changes in 2008, and in about nine months, I went from having all of that to losing all of that, going about a half a million dollars in debt, losing my company and having to completely reboot. Incredible story. And it sucked. It really, it really sucked. I ended up trying to get out of it by getting opinions from people that were never in that position yeah. instead of getting counsel from people who were. Yeah. And then when I did get the right counsel, it was all consistent. Yeah. And here's what they told me. And this is what turned it around. Number one, like stop today mm -hmm. and just, Take accountability for everything that happened, right? It's no longer the market, it's you. You weren't ready, right? right? Number two, forgive yourself for all of it. And to me, that was the hardest part. Number three, find the lesson in it. And number four, and this part seemed like BS, but be grateful for it. Yeah. And, and, so, and so what happened was it was kind of out of that process that things started to turn. And, you know, I, I've, I've ended up got out of all of that to the old fashioned way, paid it all off, like all that kind of stuff. Um, and then that kind of led me back into training. So I've written a couple of best-selling books on entrepreneurship. Um, and then I speak and all that, all that kind of stuff. But I think what's relevant here is that I've helped a ton of people to build their own you brand, yeah. personal brand, yeah, we influencer about that. brand. Yeah. And so I think that's kind of what's most important. Yeah, I love I love the message there. And and you know, two massive for me, just massive takeaways is forgive yourself. Oh yeah. Cause it, it is, I'm still, I'm still in that process. Right. Yeah. Of, uh, and I think it's a real, it's a real challenge for any human being yeah. and even more challenging for the entrepreneur that has gone through any level of loss um, or even the, the what ifs or the misses along the way. So yeah. maybe not the, the extent of loss that you've had, but the, the, decision I made, the choice I made, and if I would have made that other choice, yeah. the investment I didn't make or the property I didn't buy or all those other things that you beat yourself up over for years and years and years. And the second part of that is then be grateful yeah. for the experience and just say, you know what? You win or you learn and the learning sometimes is more important than the win. So and I think those things yeah. are sequential as well. Right? Yeah. So yeah. the forgive yourself doesn't happen till after you've learned the lesson. Well, and until after you've been accountable for it. Right. Like it, it was, it was me. learn a lesson. Yeah. Take yeah. care of the other folks own that it. you need to forgive as well. Just to own it. yourself. Yeah. And then the gratitude piece. It's like sequential. So can I tell you, Scott, like, this is what I think. This is where I, the bullshit meter stopped for me on the whole gratitude thing. Because I, I've heard it for a long time. Mm -hmm. I've been around this training industry mm -hmm. forever. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, as long as anybody I know. And, and, um, but here's the thing about gratitude. Gratitude changes everything because it shifts your perspective in the moment from what you don't have to what you do have. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is 
right? We, we all know this is entrepreneurs. If, thing, if things aren't working, we tend to get in that story and it's hard to interrupt that story, right? And what Tony used to say is, you know, the difference between where you are now and where you want to go comes down to the bullshit story you keep telling yourself about exactly. why you can't have it. Exactly. And so if you just, if you just do this, you set an alarm every morning, your gratitude alarm. And what happens is it goes off and you say three things that you're grateful for. Instantly, you train a new muscle and you shift perspective. You do it twice during the day, you get stronger faster. You do it three times during the day, you get stronger even faster. And that's what helps you to turn things around. That's huge. I love it. Start small. Yeah, it's okay start, to start small. small. Start, start small because it's not that easy to say, I'm grateful for this big stuff. It's start small. Yeah. Right? You, you, know, you know what? The, here, here's like the extra credit for entrepreneurs. The extra credit when your life is really fucked up and you don't know which way is up and, and it just feels like everything around you is collapsing. When you do your three things you're grateful for, say three things you love about yourself. Hmm. Now that's the hard. That would be hard. So that hard. would be hard. That's yeah. so hard. hard. Yeah, that's wow. hard. And then, and then I always ask people because that's exactly how I, I responded. Like that's so hard. I couldn't. I, I mean, when I started, I couldn't even figure that part out. Well, especially when you're in that despair of the downward spiral that you got that, that happened, right? Right, right, right. You find something you love about yourself now. Yeah. Have, have, Good luck with that. You, have I ever told you the story <laughs> about me selling pee? Did I ever tell you the story? No. Okay, so do you have time for a story? Yeah. Okay, so it's kind of, of course we do. This stuff, so. <laughs> hey, we're all over the place at this point, Scott. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Just go you know. there. Dive in. Let's go. <laughs> so so when I was going through all that back in the day, so like the, the first couple of years, like I think I just probably curled up in the corner in the fetal position in my bedroom. Yeah. Because I didn't know what to do. My, yeah. my marriage is falling, everything's falling apart. I get a call from an old friend. And he called me Duff for Duffy. He says, Duff. He goes, bro, I haven't talked to you in a long time. I heard you're looking to run a company. I said, again, yeah. he goes, you're hired. I said, well, what are you talking about? He goes, I have a company. I need a CEO. He goes, I know you. He goes, you're hired. I go, what am I going to do? He goes, what does it fucking matter? You need the work. <laughs> I overthink things. So, so he says, come meet me today in Pasadena. So I drive to Pasadena. I sit down with him. And he says to me, he says, Scott, he goes, uh, I decided that you're not going to run the company. He said, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run the company. He said, um, you're going to be a salesman. And I said, you know what? I, I, I'll take it. I need the cash. Yeah. He said, great. So what am I going to sell? And he said this, P. And I said, P. He said, yeah. He goes, you're going to sell P. I said, what does that mean? He said, I just bought a research lab. And we specialize in processing urine. Oh my. He said, your job is going to be to go to all the doctor's offices in Southern California and win their pee business. And send it to us. We spin the cup. We send them back the result. He said, in fact, he goes, I have a vision for you. I said, oh, fuck. What's the vision? <laughs> he said, my vision for you in one year is you're going to be the king of pee. That was my first job offer after running a company for Virgin. Right? Holy now, what do you love about yourself? <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. I, and the thing is, as entrepreneurs, we all have our own version of our own story that's crazy. We probably yeah. have 10 of them. No, but it's a great lesson in humility. You know, we talk about humble leadership and, and, you know, that that's one because you talk about Richard Branson. And my favorite quote by Richard Branson is when you're offered an opportunity and you're not sure if you can do it, just say, yes, you'll figure it out. Right. Yeah. And and it's one of my favorite quotes for him, because I think exactly like what you just said, we all tend to just overthink shit. Yeah. And and what you did is you just said yes. And you jumped in. And you said, fuck it. I'm going to go be the king of pee. <laughs> that's the way it's going to be. Right. But that's that's humility at its at it at its best. And that's pivoting at its best, you know, and you could have waited. You could have been victimized. You could have continued to but, sit in but, the fetal but wait, position. But wait, I did all those things. You know why? Because my ego was like, fuck you. How could you offer me that job? Yeah. I was so mad. In, 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 you know, when here, when here, you should have been, know, when reality is, is like where you sit today yeah, yeah. in a place of gratitude, yeah. you probably look back and go, I'm so thankful that my friend, yeah. my, my true friend, where in the moment you feel like, really? Yeah. That's what you got for me? Yeah. Fuck you. Right. But reality is, is today you're probably looking back on Matt, man, what a friend. Like, that's amazing. It, it is. And I've talked to him a million times since then and thank and then and thanked him. And, and this actually comes around because we were talking about a couple of our, you know, some stuff going on with some guys in EO and, and, and YPO and stuff like yeah. that. 
where where what happens is they go through a hard time mm-hmm. yeah. or, or or they go through a great time. They have an exit. They sell a company. Yeah. They close a business like, or, you know, for a long time and they the business and, and they're in celebration mode. Yeah. Right. They, they, or it's a worker. They, 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 they got severance. They had to eat. And so here's what, what most people do. What most people do is they end up, and this gets harder, the older we get is they're like, I'm going to take a year off. Mm. Or what happens is they sit behind that position that they used to hold Mm -hmm. and and that importance in the ego. And they think that the thing is going to come, come to them. And it doesn't, because here's the thing, two, two points. Number one, the moment you stop contributing value to your network, you get replaced. That's it. There you go. And the second thing is this, it doesn't matter what you do and how good you work. What the world moves so fast today, whatever your superhero power is, that thing that you are so fucking good at that you can always go back to. It's like that silver bullet in the gun. The one thing you can always go back to that thing that was your your superhero power two years ago is your baggage today. Mm. And the difference between people that are killing it and not is they're constantly contributing to their network and they're constantly reskilling and upskilling today. The older we get, the the more important it is that we're doing those things. I love That's everything great. you're saying, man. I'm I'm. Are are you on the pulpit right now? Because you're preaching. <laughs> I'm buying. What, what do I need to pay for right now? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I'm just sharing. I'm just sharing. You know, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Is, so so it, let's yeah, go back yeah. to the council that piece yeah. then, right? Yeah. So so you got that entrepreneur that sold, took yeah. his gap year, yeah. and wants to get back into it, and things are dark. Right? Yeah. You can't yeah. can't find entrance. Mm-hmm. How do you counsel those folks? I think that what you need to do is you need to, number one, you need to accept responsibility. Actually, the number one thing before we even get there is this idea that you have to recognize the cavalry ain't coming. Right. How many times as an entrepreneur have you been in a world of shit and you're like, somebody's going to call somebody's the thing's going to, the cavalry is coming. The cavalry is not coming. You got to go do it. You got to do it. You got to do it. And, 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 Thank and, you. And doing it means that you've got to change, not the world around you. You got to change yourself. Sure. Sometimes I feel like I've exhaustively said that, you know, and sometimes, <laughs> yeah. you know, people, you get so clouded, you get to a point, yeah. you know, when you're down and out, you get so clouded in your, in your head, you can't hear that. Yeah. It's hard. It's hard to hear that. But no one's coming. You know, it's like you, you think when capital is the, the problem, right? You're in the turnaround mode. Yeah. I've been in that scenario. And and I, I remember I kept I kept preaching. There's no one showing up with a bag of cash. Yeah. It's just not happening. No. We have to fix it from the inside out. If we don't, we're done. Yeah. You know, it's that it's that type of scenario. And you're right. The cal- the calorie's not coming, man. Uh, I would even put it this way, because I like what you said is the further the further away you get, you know, and taking that gap yeah. year or something like that. And we were talking about the brand of you before yeah. Yeah. we jumped on the podcast. And and I think the further the way you get from that, the, the, the less relevant you become. You said that That's earlier. Right. You, you lose that 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 relevancy. And, and it's not just going to, no one's going to roll up and go, oh, hey, dude, I got this for you, or I yeah. got something for you or whatever. You have to go get what you want and still be in a situ- scenario where you understand what it is you want. So, you know, even if it is, I'm going to make the decision to take this gap year or whatever it is, have a plan for what's going to happen when you come yeah. out of it. And, and, and no one understand and embrace that you're going to have to work twice as hard yeah. by the time you come out of that and be okay with it. Uh, and, and, you know, point to your point is, is like, yeah, you, 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 you have to go get it. No one's doing it for you. And you, and, and, and the other thing that happens is people forget what you did. And, and so it's like, it's like short term memory. Human short, beings just have short term memory. If I go, if I go and I talk to, so just before COVID, I talked to the entrepreneur school at USC. And so I'm talking to these kids and I told a story. And I thought it was a really, it was an interesting story. It was about Tony Robbins, right? Mm-hmm. We talked about Tony mm-hmm. Robbins. Mm-hmm. I mentioned Tony Robbins glazed eyes everywhere. Nobody has no idea who I'm talking about. So I <laughs> see course. that. So I shift right to a Gary Vee story. Yeah. And then they want my autograph, right? It's like you, you, the, the point is, the point is you got to current, you got to re, I say you got to recool yourself is what you got to do. <laughs> and, and it's like one more example is VCs. People have this perception, you're just talking about money. Yeah. People have this perception that in the venture capital community, the longer a Silicon Valley investor is a venture capitalist, the more successful they'll be. It actually is the opposite. 
So that's what the data shows. So what happens is some, the way a lot of people get into VC work in the Bay Area is they'll have a, a really successful exit. They are really hot. Everyone wants to work with them. They know they've got cash. And so all the deals come to them. Five years later, what happens? What happens is nobody at Stanford remembers who the fuck you are or what you did. And the odds are what you did, there's somebody who came out with a new tool that's yeah, better. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so the next shiny object is already there. Right. So, so, so the VC now has to get on the phone and they have to make calls and they're not good at it. And the, the ego gets in the way. So a lot of this is about not be, it's just about getting excited because you get to recreate yourself and you get to re, like it's, it's, it's an awesome process if you embrace it. So recreate or stay relevant during that gap year, right? <laughs> so that, that's the other, you said earlier, stay, present. stay, stay, add value to your network. Yeah. Go ahead and take your gap year. Yeah. And add value to your network. Keep adding value. Yeah. Keep, keep, keep either show up every once in a while, contribute something on social media. It doesn't have to be a lot, but it just, it has to be enough. And what you contribute has to be a value. I don't care about your trip in Bali. Right. I want to know what can you teach me? See, that's, we talked about the brand of you mm -hmm. and, and we talked about books earlier. Most people write a book and they tell me like, I've worked on over a hundred book projects for people. And, and what happens is they'll say, I want to, I've got a great story. I don't care about your story and nobody else does either. What we care about is <laughs> what we can learn What's from your me? story. Yeah. Don't write your story first. In your table of contents, write every lesson that you're going to teach first and then figure out what the story is that goes with it. Yeah. Everyone does it different. They do it backwards. Not everyone. Not everyone. I just finished my book. I know. I know. Just Congratulations. Finished that and I did exactly that. Here are the topics. Yes. And then I found the stories that fit those topics. Well, I think when you understand yeah. when you're, when, when, when you, when you've been in EO or YPO yeah. for that matter, you have a good understanding of this concept of experience share. Yeah. And, yeah. I, and I yeah. think that's the, that's the method, at least with, with my book, that's, that's yeah. what I came out with. I tried to accomplish experience share. I'm, I'm working on my second and I did exactly what you talked, what you're talking about, where it's, it's think of it in the mind of an experience share. What can, what's the reader? going to get out of that's, this that's not right. like oh they're, i got a great they're going to plop down 25 right? 30 bucks yeah the that's only it, person that, for me <laughs> right why would i do that it, it, can, can i just talk about the 30 bucks because like here, here, here's one here too so if you're if you're thinking about writing a book right um this is the place that you start the place that you start is you ask yourself this question why am I writing this book? Yeah. Because the strategy for releasing it and printing it, everything is different. Am I writing it because I want to be a New York Times number one bestseller sure. mm -hmm. and make my money in the speaking circuit? Yeah. That's a $300,000 proposition if you're in the business space. Is it because I want to have a brochure and be able to give those books out to or, or have people be able to afford to pay, pay for them? Is that what I want? As many hands as possible. Yeah. If you go to traditional publisher, I've had Penguin Publishing, Entrepreneur, you end up paying five bucks a piece for your book to hand them out, right? It's expensive. Or do you want to build a list so you, you know, you have something that's a free digital? So the first is, why am I doing this? And then we back the strategy out. Yeah. Now, in terms of the, the content, less than 10% of the people, I'll give you some crazy stats. Less than 10% of the people that buy a book ever get past the first chapter. Mm -hmm. And so what you need to think about, if you want people to think of like, this is a That's brochure. a crazy stat, by the way. It gets worse. <laughs> so, so if you want them to think about, you want to make sure in a chapter's length of time, you get your core stuff out that people are going to hire you for. That is That right there is super important. If you're doing an online course, here's what I want you to know. Last year, there were $315 billion spent around the world in e-learning courses. The average completion rate for an e-learning course in 2021 was 3.1%. Wow. Wow. 3.1%. Mind-blowing. One third of people that purchase an e-learning course never open it after they purchase it. Yeah. The most, wow. the biggest company in the world in e-learning, Coursera, their top performing courses get 15% completion rates. Wow. So you got to pack the good stuff up front that people are going to hire you for. Wow. It's super important. Wow. That's incredible. Those are amazing stats. So <laughs> I'm, I'm wondering about that, right? So if, if, if I spend my own money, yeah. I'm finishing the course. Yeah. If I'm spending my company's money, 
Yeah. Am I not? Am I not? Yeah. Well, you're less, at least less motivated. Yeah. And that's what happened, yeah. right? Is the company is looking to develop people. I mean, I'm, I, I, I'm in that right now. Yeah. So in yeah. fact, I just, I just cut a check for some e-learning courses yeah. um, that I'm going to put several of my salespeople through yeah. and, and, and they want it. I always get buy-in first. I don't yeah. just do it and say, here, take this yeah. is guys, I have this, who's interested, yeah. you know, and then I'll, I'll, I'll make the investment at the same time. I'm very aware that I know one that will finish and I'll be blown away if the rest do. Right. Yeah. And, and I hope that they do. Yeah. Uh, and, and if you're listening to this, I really challenge you to finish the course. Right. Yeah. But I understand the statistics and I understand what happens and you're, you're less committed when it's not your own money. So, you know, there's, there's, there's those varying levels of it. Those are, those are actually mind blowing statistics. I knew they were low. I didn't think they were that well, low. Well, here's what's hard is that in e-learn, so when so a lot of the e-learning stuff still, it's it's really new. I mean, uh, the ways it's scaled today, you know, I mean, the last two, three years, this has gone crazy. The way that most of the courses are developed are like college courses. They're just like, they're talking heads right. kind of things right. or they're, they're lecture style. Now, when you're in a classroom, there's a social pressure of having other people in the classroom to either go to class or sit through a class. Yeah. But online, if you're being taught in the same way, you don't have that social pressure to finish. And the way that it's being taught doesn't translate to the way that the learner actually would learn online. So it's it's all messed up. Um, at some point, I want to get back to the what you were talking about, speed and decision yeah. and mastermind. I want to talk about that a little bit, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that, well, and ago. we are, <laughs> uh, just for the record, we're, we're oh, approaching the 30 <laughs> minute mark, which um, normally we go about 30 minutes. So I think let's, let's continue the conversations. I think this is gold, right? Yeah. I mean, a lot of the stuff that we're talking about, regardless of the fact that, you know, we're going in a couple of different directions and we've covered a lot of things. I just, I think it's gold. I think there's a lot of nuggets out of here. And, and I want to be mindful too, yeah. Scott, that what we like to do at the end of our podcast, which, which is not now, but, but just to keep in your mind is like recap a little bit. Um, even knowing statistics, Basically speaking, the number of people that will get to the end of the podcast <laughs> is relatively low. Oh, not 3%. So, so if you're listening at this point, you're going to really get the nuggets be if, nuggets you, stick, the if you stick <laughs> with us. <laughs> so, so yeah, let's the, Scott. I'll let you. I'll let you lead lead the charge for the next five ten minutes. So, so I, I can, like talking about this learning thing. Yeah, it's a lot of what I do. Right. No. Yeah. I went to school. Awesome. I spent a lot of time. Yeah. And, and, and I do that. And, and so what I, what I like to do is what we call a reverse classroom mm. where the learning comes from the group. Nice. This is a EO actual concept, right? Yeah. And, it, and, it happened, works. and it happened because I was sitting in this room with eight really smart people yeah. just soaking stuff in from then, yeah. you know, and that's how I run my facilitation business as well. Yeah. Ask a few questions and get out of their way. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then the ping pong that happens with that this reverse learning yeah. rather than this stuffy head just lecturing somebody yeah. Yeah. that doesn't resonate with anybody yeah. but you're going to learn when you talk about it mm -hmm. when the words come out of your lips yeah. you're going to learn it you're yeah. going to remember it yeah. like you still have to write stuff down all that kind of stuff great there's some assignments to do but but I want you to talk about it because I want you to own it yeah. to learn this stuff yeah. and that's going to help Vince too mm -hmm. and it's going to help me too right so anyway I, I love this this whole learning concept we would do another hour on that if you want. <laughs> um, but talk about the online courses a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, packing it in at the beginning, great. And we used to call that when you're writing a hook, get a yeah, hook, right? Hook, yeah. Now the hook is just a bigger hook because they're not going to go through nine, ten chapters. Yeah. What you're saying. Yeah. So get that in. Does it draw them further in? Or well, I, I, I think I think that they're going to drop the book and hire you then. The, that, you know, the, the question the question is how do I? This is the question: is how do I determine what the hook is? Yeah. So what happens is most companies goes back to know your audience. Know your audience. Most companies think they know what the person needs to learn. Yeah. Right. But they don't know. Like certifications are really big right yeah. now. Yeah. Sure. Right. Yeah. It's all that certifications. Um. By the way, if you take go to Google. Academy for engineering. Mm -hmm. and you take the IT certification. The average amount of money you make in the first year is seventy thousand dollars. It's like a short, like X number of months of course. It's awesome. What a great alternative to Crazy. traditional college. Yeah. So yeah. So um, so what happens is, and the biggest reason that the completion rate is three point one percent is people don't know what their audience wants to yeah. learn 
what they're thinking about emotionally, what they're going through. Mm. And so what happens is they, they, they build the wrong hook in and then they create the wrong content. So somebody gets to the first thing and they're like, this isn't for me. Yeah. And so the most important thing to do is number one, like you always say, Scott, is to know your audience, but not just like it's a male or female at this percent. They, you got to know, like, what do they care about? What's driving them? What are the concerns they have emotionally? What's going on at home? These are the things that you want to be able to address. Yeah. And then that leads into the hook. And then that leads into the higher completion rates. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Very well, it's, I, I'm, I'm hearing it's just like you've got to find the content that's going to keep them engaged, even if it doesn't draw them out for the entire course, yeah. right? Which is still going to be unlikely mm -hmm. that they, they go through all the way to completion. But, you know, I think at that point, I, 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 you get beyond the hook and it's like you're still I like the term that you use, which is front loading. Yeah. Um, and I've written several courses online and it's a it's a big deal to me because. Uh, you know, I just, I know that the completion rate is very low yeah. regardless. And, and I, I'm thinking as you're talking about that, I'm thinking about the content that's on there and it's not front loaded the meat, yeah. the meat of what somebody needs to learn. I think you just have to embrace that. Okay, great. Reality is if I'm writing a course, very low percentage are going to get to the end. So I'm going to front load. That's why I like that term. I'm going to front load the meat. So if they get the gist of what we're trying to get them to learn, yeah. even if they don't complete it, then great, because we just have to embrace that they're not going to complete There's another word there that, that I think is really important with this, and that's engagement. Yeah. If I'm yeah. just talking at you, yeah. Yeah. It's easy to turn that off. Yeah. yeah. It's easy to turn that off, right? Well, I shifted but my last course, last course to include a lot of video. That's, to get that's why. Yeah, yeah. To get them yeah. coming back when yeah. whatever that might be, yeah. whether it's verbal or written or whatever, but getting people interested in doing something yeah. and mm -hmm. sharing it. Right? Yeah. That's where the learning comes in. Yeah. Yeah. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. So we are at time. We, we, we're going to become masterminds at some other point <laughs> because we, we promised our audience we're going to get them some ideas on masterminds at one point, a couple episodes ago. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Vince. Um, <laughs> uh, but we will get back there someday. But right now we're towards the end. So first of all, tell me if I'm not wrong. You, I told you at the beginning of this, you're going to want to know this guy, right? <laughs> no like, question. He is, yeah. He's fun. Yeah. So, uh, Couple things. Yeah. At the end of this, we're going to want people to know how to get a hold of you if you, cool. if you want them to. Yeah. But give us a couple points, right? So, what are the, the top three takeaways from today's discussion that you've got to either start doing now, stop doing now, or think about? What's What's the key here from this wide range of things? We've well, talked hang about? on, because we we've talked a lot about. I think I think as a best practice here is we talk you know about know your audience, right? Yeah. So so to to let yeah. you know what 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 we've learned about our audience, we do have entrepreneurs. There's a lot of entrepreneurs that are, are listening right now, and thank you very much. But we've also realized that we've got this executive and management group, whether they're budding entrepreneurs or just want to continue their career path and they want to grow and they're scale their own career. The next so they're not time. necessarily yeah. C-levels and, and they're not necessarily entrepreneurs. And so we've, we've had so much feedback from that group. It's yeah. been crazy. And so just know that, that that's part of the group that we're talking about. So, so, so we know that our audience are, are these leaders that, that, you know, fit into a couple of different categories. Okay. So now as you think about, you know, from, from the discussion that went, you know, a couple of different directions today, it's, it's what are the top two or three things that, you know, it's like, Hey, it's, it's Take away this, if, if you could, you know, if you could walk away anything from even your own experience, what is it? Um, okay, so I'd say number one is this, the number one piece of counsel I would give to that audience today is panic faster. Mm. We started by talking about how entrepreneurs, just people in general can fool themselves. The world is changing, the economy is changing, everything is changing, pay attention and don't hesitate, take, take action. Wow. I'm not saying live in fear. I'm saying panic faster, right? That's number one. Number two is I would say approach every day like it's the first day that you ever play the game. And here's what I mean. And this goes back to what we were talking about. A few years ago, I had an opportunity talking to Phil Jackson, who was coaching the Lakers. I said, Phil, I said, what is the difference between Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant and everybody else? You're the only guy that can answer this question. He said one word, Shoshin, S-H-O-S-H-I-N. Shoshin means beginner's mind. It's a Buddhist thing. He said that what those guys did is every time they stepped on the court, it was like the first day they ever played the game. 
They were so open to possibility that they could see the smallest distinctions that nobody else could make. And so they were constantly reskilling. So the second point here is remember to continually, like, like, like your superhero power a couple of years ago is your baggage today. Keep learning, keep reskilling, keep reskilling yourself up. And the last thing would be this. The last thing would be the two most important questions you can ask today. You can ask your customers, you can ask your family, you can ask your kids, are what's most important to you and what has to happen or how do you know that you're getting what you want so that I have your buyer blueprint and whether you're an employee that I want to make sure loves working at this place yeah. or you're a kid of mine and I want to make sure that I'm delivering what you need to you in the right way that makes sense for you. Those two questions are going to be the ones to change again. Two, two things that two, two things from that. So one is, is I love, in fact, I was just at the EOA st strategic day yeah. and it was so funny. Uh, you know, Mike Cato. Yeah. yeah. So Cato said the same thing, panic faster. Yeah. And, and what I love about that is, is just, just so we get clarity out to our audience. Uh, when I hear that, I immediately think of panic creates urgency. That's right. And, and that's, that's what it is. That's the thing that's is, is, is that everything becomes urgent. And then now you have this heightened level or heightened sense of urgency around everything that you're doing. I love that. Yeah. Um, second is, have you read relentless by Tim Grover? Yes, yes. Okay. So when you talk about, well, so I'm a big fan of that. I'm a big fan of Phil Jackson, big Laker yeah. fan. And, and then when you talk about, you know, two of the best Kobe Bryant and, and Michael Jordan, and it was funny. So I went, I got to meet Tim Grover and I got to, you know, I, I saw him speak and I'm a big fan of his, his, his books, but you know, I, I got to have this conversation with him and I was just talking about, I was asking about Kobe and to your point, what he said about Kobe and what he did with Kobe is he would go before, I mean, they were the first ones at a court, like our, you know, the first thing in the morning and the game's not until that night. And he's walking on every plank of the court to feel where the soft spots are and the hard spots are and that level of attention to detail that Kobe Bryant was open-minded to completely change his game that night, mm -hmm. according to the court that he was playing on to the different spots that would affect his dribble, that would affect his step Love. in in any way. Love. And and I'm like, Oh my God, like that level of planning, yeah. that level of detail is really mind blowing. We think about it. That's why Kobe Bryant was who he was. That's that's why Michael Jordan is who he is. Amen. Amen. So my key takeaway here, and it's something that, I, that I'd really like to talk about, a lot more low key than your guys. I'm not going to talk about Phil and Kobe and, and those folks, but it's but it's paying attention to the signs. So you say yeah. panic faster, and I'm saying no. Take the blinders off. Yeah, and get people that will help you take those blinders off. To that's, point out, that's the key. To Scott. point out things that you can't see. Yeah, I can only see what I see. And if I have people that are helping me look at these things over here, not tell me everything's rosy all the time. Yeah, right. Tell me the things that are coming off of my flank. Yeah, and that's be, why you need a coach. And be that. right. Yeah, and be aware. Like just look for the signs. Yeah. Read the wind, yeah. look for the signs, do yeah. all of that, and then you can panic faster. Yeah. Right? Adjust to those. You can adjust, to, adjust those. to those things. Awesome. So. I, I love, I, I love, I just want to say this because like it's my own takeaway and this is what I love about having, having guests on this podcast. So thank you. Mm -hmm. I just want to personally thank you for, for being here. And I love what I just personally get out of it. And, and, you know, you, you made me think of just when you said with Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant is that they played each game as if it was the first time they ever stepped on the court and, and relating it to just being open-minded yeah, uh, and, and keeping your mind open because it reduces the amount of blind spots that you have yeah. to, to, to the point that you, you just made. So, so I, I wanna, love that. Thank I want to make a Thank point about the that. podcast and having guests as well. So yesterday we had our strategic planning uh, event for our, our podcast. Oh, awesome. And we were talking about changes and things and all that kind of stuff. And as I reflected this, I got up at three in the morning because I couldn't, they sleep, right? And I'm reflecting about that and I'm thinking, well, why am I doing this? Or what is, what is it that I'm getting out of it? The first thing that I wrote is that, and you you tried to say this yesterday and you didn't fully say it. This is therapy. Like mm. this mm. for me is therapy. Mm. It, it's great to sit around and talk to other entrepreneurs about the things that we deal with. Mm. So that's the first thing. And the second part that it's a tribute to you is that we become better friends. Mm. He and I become better friends mm. because of this. Mm. this sharing the thing that we get to do. So um, 
those are the things that I'm grateful for today. So awesome. I want to come back to the gratitude piece. Awesome. Those two pieces on why I like doing this podcast. Yeah. So and having guests that change the energy. Too. <laughs> I, I love awesome. that. I, Scott, I love everything that you just said. And thank you. Thank you for that. And, and, and Scott, this Scott, uh, thank you for the reminder for gratitude. And I, and I do try to practice that on, on a daily basis. And that's a challenge, right? It is a challenge to wake up every day and say, my wife and I have a tradition when we sit and eat together, it doesn't matter if we're at a restaurant or at home. And we say, let's, let's, let's just say what we're thankful for today. And we practice it together. And when we do it together, there's even, a, I think it's even more powerful than when you're just saying it yourself. Um, and I find that even challenging, right? Even that becomes, it, it is a challenge. And yet, yet it is incredibly powerful. I appreciate the reminder. Uh, and I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for you coming on here because it's like, I love Scott and I have just embraced being lifelong learners and we love learning from others. Um, uh, any, any way that we can elevate ourselves. Uh, I'm grateful for. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me guys. Yeah, this, this is fun. Is, this is fun. We should do it again. I love to. Oh, man, <laughs> well, we need to follow up because <laughs> I think we talked, we covered so much and then, and then uh, we definitely need, need to follow up. I've had other conversations with you that go this way. This they is move true. around. No they usually do. Yeah. Well, listen, I'll, fi I'll finish with this. Yeah. For those of you that have made it all the way through this podcast, <laughs> I just, I, I'm thankful for you and grateful for listening. So we appreciate everybody listening. As always, you can check us out on the CEO podcast. Dot net. Uh, we love your feedback for any for any uh, new new topics. Uh, I'll just leave it at that, Scott. How do people get in touch with you? Do you want do you sure. want them to get in touch with you? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, uh, shoot an email. That's probably the easiest way to connect at scottduffy.com. Connect at scottduffy.com. Um, you can find uh, ways for us to work together at scottduffy.com um, or hit me up on social media. I'm on every channel at Scott Duffy Media. Nice. Sounds pretty simple. Yeah. Simple. All right. Yeah. Like it. And, and for us, it's Scott and Vince at gmail.com. Send us your, your request on what challenges, right? Things that you didn't like about what we had to say. Yeah. We love that as well. So uh, again, we're going to learn from the audience as much as we're going to learn from our guests. So I yeah. uh, appreciate your listening. And until next time. Cheers. Thank you for joining us for the CEO Podcast. Please visit us at theceopodcast.net, where you can learn more about our co-hosts and listen to past episodes. If you would like to have a discussion and dive deeper into any topic,